backtracks, backtracks. In the middle of my room, made this video just for you. Spotlight, spotlight. I can't think up a good rhyme. He can't think up a good rhyme. I can't think up a good rhyme. Oh, ho, ho. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Do you know what New Year's resolution number one is going to be? Trying to move backtracks closer to the beginning of the month. But anyway, such as it is, yes, at the end of the month once again, it is time for Backtracks, my monthly roundup of notable album anniversaries, divisible by five, with at least one Spotlight album review. So, without further delay, let's just jump right on in and see which albums are celebrating anniversaries for the month of November 2020. In November of 1955, Harry Belafonte released his sophomore album, Belafonte. Produced by Henri René and backed by the Norman Luboff Choir, this album has the distinction of being the very first release to top the Billboard Pop Albums chart when it began weekly publication in March of 1956, holding on to the number one spot for six weeks until being overtaken by Elvis Presley's debut album. This set includes Belafonte Originals, Troubles, and Suzanne, and interpretations of folk songs and standards, such as Jump Down, Spin Around, Scarlet Ribbons, and Unchained Melody. Also released 65 years ago this month was the Mel Torme album It's a Blue World. After spending the first decade of his career as a pop singer, this album was Torme's first foray into jazz, the genre for which he'd become famous for the rest of his life and career. Featuring standards such as Duke Ellington's I Got It Bad and That Ain't Good, the Gershwin classic How Long Has This Been Going On, Johnny Burke and Jimmy Van Heusen's Polka Dots and Moonbeams, and the Rodgers and Hart tune Isn't It Romantic. The album features arrangements by Marty Page, Andre Previn, and Sandy Courage, better known as Alexander Courage, who would gain fame over a decade later as the composer of the theme for the original Star Trek TV series. Fascinating. Six decades ago this month saw the release of Muddy Waters at Newport 1960. Produced by Chess Records owner Leonard Chess, this recording was captured during Muddy's performance at the Newport Jazz Festival on July 3rd of that year. Backed by Otis Spann on piano, James Cotton on harmonica, and Francis Clay on drums, the track list includes the Willie Dixon song I'm Your Hoochie Coochie Man, the Muddy original Baby Please Don't Go, and the immortal blues classic Got My Mojo Working. The closing track on the recording, Goodbye Newport Blues, was written the day before by celebrated poet and Newport Jazz Fest attendee Langston Hughes. The album is included on Rolling Stone's original list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and in Vibe's list of the 100 essential albums of the 20th century. Also released in November of 1960 was His Hand in Mine, Elvis Presley's eighth studio album and his first of three gospel recordings. It peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Pop Albums chart, and was recorded in a single 14-hour recording session with Elvis backed by the same band with whom he made his pop albums. Recorded in the same session but not included on the album were the singles Surrender, which topped the pop chart when it was released in 1961, and Crying in the Chapel, which wouldn't be issued until 1965 but still climbed to number 3 on the chart. The album achieved gold certification by the RIAA in 1969 and platinum certification in 1992. In November of 1965, The Love and Spoonful released their debut album, Do You Believe in Magic? It peaked at number 32 on the Billboard 200 and generated two singles that reached the top 10 on both the US and Canadian singles charts. The title track hit number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached number 3 in Canada. Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind climbed to number 6 on the Canadian chart and number 2 in the US. Several songs on the album, such as Blues in the Bottle and Wild About My Lovin', are reworkings of traditional folk and blues songs as a nod to their folk and jug band roots. In fact, rumor has it that attending a Love and Spoonful concert is what prompted Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir, and Ron McKernan to abandon their previous jug and folk band and go electric, soon after forming The Grateful Dead. Also released 55 years ago this month was The Four Tops' second album. It climbed to number three on the Billboard Black Albums chart, later known as the R&B Albums chart, and number 20 on the Billboard 200. Three hit singles were released from the album. I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch scored the group their first number one on both the Billboard Hot 100 and R&B singles charts. It's the same old song peaked at number two on the R&B chart and went top five on the Hot 100 and the Canadian singles chart while also going top 10 in the Netherlands. Something About You was a top 20 Billboard Hot 100 single and landed in the top 10 of the Billboard R&B chart and the Canadian singles chart. 
And here's a trivia note for you. The four tops formed as the four aims in 1953 and remained intact with the same four core members until 1997. Happy 50th anniversary this month to Derek and the Dominoes album Layla and other assorted love songs. It peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and reappeared on the chart three additional times in 1972, 74, and 77. It currently holds platinum certification by the RIAA. The album's biggest single, Layla, reached its Billboard Hot 100 peak of number 10 in 1972. It was also a top 10 single in Japan, Poland, the Netherlands, Canada, and New Zealand. The song didn't reach its peak of number 4 on the UK singles chart until 1982, and incredibly, the album didn't chart at all in the UK until 2011, and even then, it only peaked at number 68. It got a tepid critical reception at first to go along with its chart performance, but has since been lauded as one of Eric Clapton's finest works, and has landed on several all-time greatest albums lists, including those by Rolling Stone and VH1, and was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2000. Also released in November of 1970 was Cat Stevens' fourth album, Tea for the Tillerman. It was a top ten album in Australia and the UK, reaching number two and number eight on their respective charts. It peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200, and currently holds triple platinum status in the US and gold certification in the UK. Two singles were released from the album. Father and Son was a top 20 hit in Australia and went top 40 in the Netherlands. And Wild World reached the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 and the top 20 of the Canadian singles chart. But incredibly, neither single charted in the UK until 2007, when Wild World quietly crept up to a peak of number 52. Two covers of Father and Son reached number 2 on the UK singles charts by pop group Boyzone in 1995, and again in 2004 as a solo single by Boyzone member Ronan Keating with Stevens himself on guest vocals. A 1988 cover of Wild World by reggae group Maxi Priest peaked at number 5 in the UK. In November of 1975, Queen released their fourth album, A Night at the Opera. It was the band's first album to earn platinum certification in the US, where it peaked at number 4 on the Billboard 200. It spent four non-consecutive weeks at number one in the UK, and also topped the album's charts in Australia, New Zealand, and the Netherlands, and reached number two in Canada. Single You're My Best Friend was a top ten hit in Canada, Ireland, the Netherlands, and the UK, and reached number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. But the album's biggest hit and the band's most popular song was Bohemian Rhapsody, which went number one in six countries, including the UK, Canada, and Australia, and was a top ten single in eight others, including the US, Belgium, Norway, and Spain. With its appearance in the 1992 movie Wayne's World, the song experienced a resurgence, climbing to number one in the Netherlands, number two in the US, and number three in Denmark. Bohemian Rhapsody is one of just a few songs to be covered original lyrics intact by Weird Al Yankovic, albeit with a different title to reflect his instrumental arrangement, in this case, Bohemian Polka. Also celebrating its 45th anniversary this month is Family Reunion, the ninth album by The OJs. It was their highest charting album up to that point on the Billboard 200 at number 7, and their third consecutive album to top the Billboard R&B albums chart. It was also their fourth consecutive album to achieve at least gold certification, and their second to go platinum. Both of the album's singles, I Love Music and Livin' for the Weekend, were number one hits on the Billboard R&B singles chart and top 20 singles on the Billboard Hot 100, with I Love Music peaking at number five and also reaching the top 10 of the Canadian singles chart and the top 20 in the UK. Although never officially released on its own, the B-side of the Livin' for the Weekend single, called Stairway to Heaven, not to be confused with the Led Zeppelin song of the same name, reached number one on the R&B chart and became a popular song on classic soul and R&B radio. Four decades ago this month, REO Speedwagon released their ninth album, High Infidelity. It was the band's first album to break the top ten in any country, reaching the top of the charts in the US and Canada, and number six in Australia. It was their first album to chart at all in the UK, where it also peaked at number six, the Netherlands, where it reached number seven, and Switzerland and Norway, where it went top twenty. Within three months, it had gone platinum in the US and was certified diamond in 2017. Four hit singles were spawned from the album. Keep On Lovin' You was their first number one on the Billboard Hot 100, and it climbed to number two in Canada, number three in Australia, and number seven in the UK. Take It On The Run went top five in the US and Canada, and top 20 in the UK. Don't Let Him Go, my personal favorite song on the album, reached number 10 on the Canadian singles chart and number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100, and the doo-wop inspired In Your Letter went top 20 in the US and top 40 in Canada. If you guys have not listened to this album, you've got to check it out. It's one of the best of the 80s, and yeah, don't take it for granted. It's fantastic. 
November of 1980 also saw the release of Double Fantasy, the fifth album by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Its critical and commercial receptions were rather tepid at first. It reached no higher than number 11 on the Billboard 200 until Lennon's tragic murder three weeks after the album's release, after which it jumped to the top of the album's charts in 10 countries, including the UK, Australia, France, Japan, and the US, where it sat at number one for eight straight weeks. Lead-off single, Just Like Starting Over, had a similar chart history, only peaking at number 6 in the US and number 8 in the UK for its first six weeks until topping the singles charts in both countries, as well as in Canada, Australia, and four more countries. Woman, the first posthumously issued Lennon single, reached number 1 in the UK, Canada, and Ireland, number 2 in the US, number 3 in Austria, and number 4 in Australia. Double Fantasy won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1982. In November of 1985, Robert Palmer released his eighth album, Riptide. It peaked at number two on the Canadian Albums Chart, number eight on the Billboard 200, and number five in the UK, where it achieved gold certification in nine months. It was also a top 20 album in Australia and New Zealand. The album's third single, Addicted to Love, was its biggest, thanks in part to its iconic music video. It was a number one hit in the US and Australia, and a top five hit in New Zealand, the UK, and Canada. Subsequent single, I Didn't Mean to Turn You On, a top 10 R&B hit for its original artist Shirelle two years earlier, reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100, the top 10 in Ireland and the UK, and the top 20 of the Canadian chart. Hyperactive made the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100. Drummer Tony Thompson and Duran Duran guitarist Andy Taylor, fresh off their team up with Palmer for their Power Station project earlier that year, also made contributions to this album. Addicted to Love earned Palmer a Grammy for Best Male Rock Vocal Performance. Speaking of Duran Duran, 35 years ago this month also saw the release of So Red the Rose by Arcadia, the side project consisting of three-fifths of Duran Duran, Simon Le Bon, Nick Rhodes, and Roger Taylor. It was a top 20 album in Canada, where it reached number 14. It climbed to number 23 in the US and number 30 on the UK Albums Chart. Single Election Day became a top 10 hit in New Zealand, where it reached number 4, Ireland, where it peaked at number 5, the US, where it charted at number 6, and the UK and Norway, where it climbed to number 7. Follow-up single, Goodbye Forever, was a top 40 US hit. Subsequent singles, The Promise and The Flame, both made the top 40 in Ireland, with The Promise going top 40 in the UK as well, and The Flame also charting in the Netherlands. The album boasts guest appearances by Herbie Hancock, Sting, Grace Jones, and Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour. Happy 30th anniversary this month to Put Yourself in My Shoes, the sophomore album by Clint Black. It topped the Billboard Country Albums chart and peaked at number 18 on the Billboard 200. Singles Loving Blind and Where Are You Now were number one hits on both the US and Canadian country singles charts, while the title track went top five and One More Payment went top ten on both charts. Although it wasn't released as a single, the album track This Nightlife peaked at number 61 on the Billboard Country Singles chart. The album currently enjoys triple platinum status in the US and platinum status in Canada, even though it apparently never reached either the country albums or primary albums charts in Canada. November of 1990 also saw the release of The Scorpions' 11th album, Crazy World. The band's second best-selling album in the US, it reached number 21 on the Billboard 200 and is certified double platinum by the RIAA. It topped the album's charts in Austria and Germany and was a top 10 album through most of the rest of Western Europe. It peaked at number 27 in the UK and number 20 in Canada. Single Wind of Change topped the charts in France, Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands, climbed to number 2 in the UK, number 4 in the US, and number 10 in Canada. Follow-up single Send Me an Angel missed the top 40 in the US but made the chart in the UK and was a top 10 single in most of Europe. The album is estimated to have sold 7 million copies worldwide. 25 years ago this month, Coolio released his sophomore album Gangsta's Paradise. His best-selling album, it currently holds double platinum certification in the U.S., where it peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hip Hop Albums chart and number 9 on the Billboard 200. In the U.K., it reached number 3 on the R&B Albums chart and number 18 on the Primary Albums chart. It was a top 5 album in Switzerland, Austria, and New Zealand, and a top 10 album in Germany and the Netherlands. The single release of the title track, prominently featured in the film Dangerous Minds, went number 1 and was the biggest-selling single of the year in the U.S., and also topped the singles charts in at least 18 countries, including the UK, the Netherlands, France, Australia, Greece, and Zimbabwe. 1, 2, 3, 4, Something New reached the top 5 on the Billboard Hot 100 and the top 20 on the UK and Australian charts. Too Hot made the top 40 in the US and the top 10 in the UK. 
Both of these singles also went top 10 in New Zealand. The title track earned a Grammy nomination for Record of the Year and a Grammy win for Best Rap Solo Performance. Also released in November of 1995 was Your Little Secret, the fifth album by Melissa Etheridge. It was her highest charting album thus far on the Billboard 200, reaching number 6. It was also a top 10 album in the Netherlands and peaked at number 17 in Australia. This was Etheridge's only album from which all three singles reached the top 10 of the Canadian Singles Chart. I Want to Come Over topped the chart in Canada, but just missed the top 20 in the US, peaking at number 22, and reached number 29 in both Australia and New Zealand. Nowhere to Go climbed to number 4 in Canada and was a top 40 single on the Billboard Hot 100. The title track reached number 6 in Canada, landed at number 4 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, and made the top 40 in Australia and the Netherlands. November of 2000 saw the release of Sade's fifth album, Lovers Rock. It spent over a year on the Billboard 200 chart, peaking at number 3, and by July of 2001 it had been certified triple platinum in the US. It was a top 10 album in 15 countries, including number 1 in Poland, number 2 in Sweden, number 4 in France, number 5 in Norway, and number 6 in Spain. It climbed to number 13 on the Canadian Albums Chart and number 18 in the UK. The album's first single, By Your Side, went top 20 on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart and the UK Singles Chart, and was a top 40 single in Ireland. Follow-up single, King of Sorrow, landed in the top 60 of the UK Singles Chart and also charted in the Netherlands. By Your Side was nominated for a Grammy for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, and Lovers Rock won the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album. Also released 20 years ago this month was Black and Blue, the third US album and fourth international album by the Backstreet Boys. It broke the record for global one-week sales figures by moving over 5 million copies during its debut week, one and a half million of them just in the US, making Backstreet Boys the first artist to have two consecutive albums sell more than one million copies each in their first week. Black and Blue spent its first two weeks on the Billboard 200 at number one, it also topped the album's charts in Canada, Germany, Malaysia, Spain, and Switzerland. It hit the top 10 in 15 other countries, including number 2 in Australia, number 3 in Japan, number 4 in Argentina, number 5 in Norway, and number 6 in Italy. Lead-off single Shape of My Heart was a chart-topping hit in Canada, Sweden, Switzerland, and New Zealand, and a top 10 single in the UK, Australia, and the US. Follow-up single, The Call, went top 10 in the Netherlands, the UK, and Sweden, and top 20 in Australia and Germany. More than that, reached the top 40 of the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Swiss singles charts, and the top 20 in the UK and Sweden. Within a month of release, the album had earned eight times platinum certification by the RIAA. Fifteen years ago this month, Chameleon Air dropped his debut album, The Sound of Revenge. It climbed to number two on the Billboard Hip Hop Albums chart and number 10 on the Billboard 200. It reached number 11 on the New Zealand Albums chart and number 22 in the UK. It currently enjoys platinum certification in the US and gold status in the UK. Debut single, Turn It Up, featuring Lil Flip, just missed the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100, but was a top 10 single on the Billboard Rap Songs chart. Follow-up single, Ryden, featuring Crazy Bone, was his first and thus far only number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100, and it peaked at number two on the Billboard Rap Songs chart. It was also a top 10 hit in the UK and New Zealand, reaching number two in both countries, and Germany, where it hit number eight. Grown and Sexy reached the top 40 in the UK and New Zealand. Ryden won a Grammy for Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group, and inspired the Weird Al Yankovic parody, White and Nerdy which was the most successful single of his career and his only top 10 hit, reaching number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100. Also released in November of 2005 was Some Hearts, the debut album by fourth season American Idol winner Carrie Underwood. It topped the country albums charts in both the US and the UK and peaked at number 2 on the Billboard 200 during its staggering 137 week run on the chart, 10 of those weeks within the top 5. Three of the album's five singles, Jesus Take the Wheel, Before He Cheats, and Wasted, topped the country singles charts in both the US and Canada. Don't Forget to Remember Me reached the top five on both charts. Before He Cheats was a top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, and Jesus Take the Wheel made the Hot 100 top 20. Some Hearts earned Underwood three Grammys for Best New Artist as well as Best Female Country Vocal Performance two years in a row. This was the best-selling album by any American Idol alumni in the U.S., the best-selling country album of the 2000s, and was the first country album by a female artist to top the year-end Billboard sales charts two consecutive years. In November of 2010, Kanye West released his fifth album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. 
It peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 and Billboard Hip Hop Albums charts and on the Canadian Albums chart. It landed in the top ten in six other countries, including Denmark, Australia, and New Zealand. Three of the album's four singles reached the top 20 of the Billboard Hot 100. Runaway, featuring Pusha T, also made the top 10 of the Billboard Rap Songs chart and the top 20 of the Canadian Singles chart. All of the Lights, featuring Rihanna, climbed to number 2 on the Billboard R&B and Rap Songs charts, and number 13 on the New Zealand and Irish Singles charts, and went top 20 in the UK. The album topped several critics' lists of the best albums of the year, including Rolling Stone, Village Voice, Pitchfork, AV Club, Time Magazine, and Stereo Gum, and landed in the top 10 of numerous albums of the decade lists. It won Best Rap Album at the 2012 Grammys, but was snubbed for Album of the Year nomination despite its widespread critical acclaim. Also celebrating its 10th anniversary this month is Loud, the fifth album by Rihanna. It reached number one on the album charts in Canada, the UK, and four other countries, and also topped the R&B albums charts in the UK, Australia, and the US. It peaked at number two on the primary Australian albums chart and at number three on the Billboard 200. It was a top 10 album in 13 other countries. It's currently certified at least triple platinum in seven countries, including seven times in the UK, five times in Ireland, and three times in the US, Canada, and France. Of the album's seven singles, three reached the top of the Billboard Hot 100, Only Girl in the World, What's My Name featuring Drake, and s and The former two also topped the UK singles chart, with Only Girl in the World also hitting number one in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and Ireland. s and was also an Australian and Canadian number one. Cheers, Drink to That was a top ten hit in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, while Man Down topped the French singles charts. Only Girl won the Grammy for Best Dance Recording, What's My Name scored a Grammy nomination for Best Rep and Sung Collaboration, and the album was nominated for Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Happy fifth birthday this month to Little Mix's third album, Get Weird. It reached a peak position of number two on the UK, Scottish, and Australian albums charts, and number one in Ireland. It climbed to number eight in New Zealand, number nine in the Netherlands, number 12 in Canada, and number 13 in the US, making Little Mix the only UK girl group whose first three albums all debuted in the top 15 of the Billboard 200. All four singles from the album were top 20 chart hits in the UK and Ireland. Black Magic hit number one in the UK and number three in Ireland. Secret Love Song featuring Jason Derulo climbed to number six in the UK, while Love Me Like You reached number eight in Ireland. All four singles went top 40 in Australia, with Black Magic reaching number 8, Hair featuring Sean Paul peaking at number 10, and Secret Love Song making the top 20 in both Australia and New Zealand. Get Weird is currently certified double platinum in the UK. Also released in November of 2015 was Adele's third album, 25. It spent its first seven weeks on the Billboard 200 at number 1, the first album by a female artist to do so since Whitney by Whitney Houston back in 1987. It topped the charts in more than two dozen countries, including Canada, Brazil, Poland, Japan, Russia, South Africa. You get the picture. It broke first week sales records in multiple countries, including the UK, the US, and Canada. Lead-off single, Hello, was a blockbuster hit, reaching number one in three dozen countries, including spending ten consecutive weeks at number one in the US and remaining in the top 100 of the UK singles chart for 30 weeks. Follow-up single, When We Were Young, was a top 10 hit in the UK and Australia. Send My Love to Your New Lover made the top 5 in the UK and the top 10 in the US and Canada. Hello won Grammy Awards for Record of the Year and Song of the Year, and 25 won the Juno for International Album of the Year, the Brit for British Album of the Year, and Grammys for Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. In November of 2010, Kanye West... West? West? Kanye West? Begging Darwin, please, way, wah. Darwin, won't you ease my one we <laughs> Far years ago, nay. Aereo Speedwagon. Aereo. 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 This first one might come as a bit of a surprise, possibly a bit of a shock to you. Uh, oh, but then maybe not, because uh, as I've mentioned before in this uh, feature, one of the things I do try to do with my Backtrack Spotlight albums is try to put my feelers out a little bit more, go outside my comfort zone, and you know experiment with uh, checking out new albums, new artists, new genres, 
uh, that I have never listened to before. So in that respect, maybe this won't be such a surprise to you. But anyway, let's get right down to it. The first of my two selections was released in November of 1985, so it is 35 years old this month. It is Psycho Candy, the debut album by The Jesus and Mary Chain. Uh, now, it, this was not very successful in the States. It barely cracked the Billboard 200, reached, uh, was it number 183 or something like that? Uh, although it was number 31 on the UK album charts, that was its peak in the UK, so modest success in the UK. Um, now, one of the reasons I decided to try this album was based on one description I read that called it a, a mixture of pop and post-punk or shoegaze. And as you guys know, uh, whenever I see an album uh, that ticks off more than one genre box, so to speak. Uh, it intrigues me, it compels me to at least give it a try. And so that's what I decided to do with this album. So going in, I I kind of was kind of optimistic. I kind of had a feeling that I was maybe going to enjoy it. Uh, but then maybe that's why uh, this ended up being... I hate to say this, because I hope I don't make anybody angry, angry over this, but uh, to get too much hate for this, but this was possibly the very first Backtrack Spotlight album that has truly ended up being a disappointment for me. And maybe it's because I had my expectations a little too high going into it. Maybe I was just, you know, I was expecting to enjoy it uh, so much that it ended up uh, just not appealing to me, uh, not being what I thought it was, even though I had never listened to a note of it before. You know, I mean, it does, to its credit, it does uh, fit that description of being a bit of a mix of pop and post-punk. Because about a third of the album's selections were they actually reminded me some of uh, Motown 60s, uh, Brill Building, or possibly some of the more Phil Spector produced kind of stuff that came out of the 60s. Uh, you know, so it had that kind of a sound to it, and you know I love Motown and that kind of stuff. So those tracks appealed to me, but unfortunately the other two-thirds, uh, most of those songs were just uh, covered in a layer of uh, amp feedback and guitar feedback that was just kind of steady throughout the song, and that kind of stuff has never appealed to me. Uh, even though I went into this album with an open mind, and I listened to it uh, multiple times. Uh, so yeah, I just I tried as much as I could to just keep my mind open, relax, let the music flow, so to speak. But uh, yeah, still, even after this album, after my keeping my mind open, yeah, just that, that feedback kind of stuff, that noise rock, I guess that's probably one of the uh, hallmarks of noise rock, is that layer of feedback that's over everything else, just does not appeal to me. It's... Uh, to an extent, it's like no, uh, nails on a chalkboard. I mean, hey, at least I tried it. I gotta say, I, I gave it a, a good, honest try, and I'm gonna try listening to it at least once more before, you know, selling it to the local store for trade-in. Uh, I, I, I don't want to do that so quickly. I like to give albums at least three tries minimum. I'm gonna give this album more. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see, though, why this would appeal to a lot of other people out there, you know, because they, they do love the, the feedback kind of stuff and the... I don't know, maybe just the acoustic dynamics, that's not the right word, but, you know, the, the acoustic uh, properties of uh, songs being drenched in feedback and, you know, what other kind of sounds, whether real or, you know, perceived in the human brain, that that can come up with. You know, people who are more experimental in their listening, I can totally understand why this album would appeal to them. Just, uh, I am, fortunately, it was not one of those people. So, yeah, sorry to say, uh, yeah, Psycho Candy by the Jesus, Jesus and Mary Chain just uh, did not appeal to me, and unfortunately, it was just not uh, one of the uh, better sections. I am still not regretful that I picked it up, though, because I wanted to give it a try. I would have been, I would have remained curious about it if I hadn't given it a try. So, in that respect, I'm glad I picked it up and at least, you know, gave it a good listen. However, the second of my two Spotlight album listens this month yielded a decidedly different result, thank goodness. Uh, this next one was released in November of 1970, so it turned 50 years old this month. It is the self-titled debut album by Stephen Stills, uh, one-third of Crosby, Stills & Nash, obviously. And uh, this one was much more successful than uh, Jesus and Mary Chain. This one reached number three on the Billboard 200, and it actually went gold less than two weeks after it was released. And you can see this this is obviously a subsequent pressing, not a first pressing, because it's got the uh, gold RIAA certification sticker on it. Uh, now, this album, one thing that really surprised me about this album was it had mostly, or, well, at least half the songs on it, had a rather bluesy sound to them. And, you know, being Stephen Stills and, you know, CSN, CSNY, I would have pictured more of a uh, James Taylor-esque kind of a singer-songwriter kind of folky type of thing. But yeah, this uh, ended up having a lot of blues uh, in it, and uh, Black Queen, the song Black Queen in particular, 
was just Stephen Stills and his guitar, and it was recorded live, and the uh, notation on the liner notes here was particularly amusing, was recorded live, and the performance is courtesy of Jose Cuervo Gold Label Tequila. So uh, I can't speak from personal experience, uh, but I guess in a way that can spur on creativity and, you know, notch things up a bit in terms of uh, artistic inspiration, let's put it that way, but, but uh, you know, that was a very, very good song, an excellent song on this album. Uh, the highlight, however, was Love the One You're With, that is one of Stephen Stills, possibly the best known song by Stephen Stills is on this album, that kicks the album off. And not only do David Crosby and Graham Nash provide backing vocals on it, as well as two other songs, those being Sit Yourself Down and We Are Not Hopeless, but uh, so many other amazing guests are on this album. Rita Coolidge, John Sebastian of The Love and Spoonful, Cass Elliott, uh, they all appear on vocals in various songs on this album. Uh, Ringo Starr does drums on two tracks, To a Flame and We Are Not Helpless. And also, Eric Clapton performs guitar on Go Back Home, and Jimi Hendrix performs guitar on Old Times, Good Times. And I believe that is one of his final uh, recordings of his career. Uh, he actually passed away just two months after this album, or excuse me, two months before this album was released, and so it is uh, dedicated to, uh, Stephen Stills dedicated this album to Jimi Hendrix in the liner notes. So, uh, and uh, yeah, one uh, another of uh, Hendrix's last contributions was to Love's album uh, False Start from 1970. So, so yeah, just a, a bunch of, a huge array of guest stars on this album, just fantastic. And the songs are just excellent. Uh, you'll love the one you're with, as I said, was my favorite song on the album and uh, one of my favorite songs to come out of the 1970s, honestly. And uh, We Are Not Helpless, that's the closing track on the album, and that has pretty much all of the big guest stars, uh, vocally anyway, uh, that appear in the album, just kind of join in as with a big, you know, on a big, uh, almost a choir type of thing at the end, just everybody in a rousing sing-along kind of thing. Sing-along more than choir, I guess you'd say. And uh, another great song was... Uh, uh, the other single on here, Sit Yourself Down, it's just a fantastic uh, song and a fantastic album. I mean, if, uh, you know, regardless of whether or not you're into Crosby, Stills & Nash or Crosby, Stills & Nash & Young, uh, give this one a try. It's it's just excellent. I picked up another one of his albums uh, after listening to this one. I like this one so much. Don't like that one as much. That was actually Stills from 1975 is the other one that I picked up. Pretty good, but not quite as good as this one. And uh, yeah, this is... Yeah, as I said, just a fantastic album. Uh, one of my better picks, I think, for the year in terms of Backtrack Spotlight albums. So uh, that kind of evens it out. Yeah, unfortunately, as I said, uh, Psycho Candy was uh, unfortunately a disappointment. But this one was actually, it turned out better than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, an excellent, uh, uh, decently balanced pair of uh, back back Backtracks Spotlight albums for November of 2020. And so that'll do it for this month's Backtracks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.